Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to Jargon Free Help. Now this week, like many of you, I was probably looking at the Apple website and they said there was going to be an exciting announcement about iTunes. I thought it was going to be something like it would be web-based so I could pick up my iTunes anywhere, my music, movies and TV shows. I also thought maybe it was going to be a subscription, maybe getting paying something per month and then being able to watch as many movies, TV shows and listen to as much music as I like. Instead, it turns out the Beatles are now available on iTunes. There was a little bit of a war between the two, so I guess this is some sort of breakthrough and, well, let's face it, they're a very popular band. The war was simply that Apple and also the Beatles, the record company behind it, basically had very similar names, Apple, in the title of both of them. If you're a Beatles fan, that's probably great news. You may already have had some of that stuff already on your computer, but now you can go and get more of it. And I think there's some videos there as well. There's some ads to see, you know, that might bring back some nostalgic memories. Anyway, on to this week's topic. Adam, a friend of mine, is moving his bookmarks in Firefox from one computer to another and he wanted to know how to do that. And really, it is quite straightforward and you can do the same for Internet Explorer and Safari as well. To do this on Firefox, what you need to do is you need to go to your bookmarks, choose Organize Bookmarks. If you're looking at it on Windows, you'll see it's got Import and Backup here. You choose that and you choose Export HTML. You can then give it a name or you can leave it as a default as bookmarks.html and you simply then save it. If you're using a Mac, again you've gone into your Organize Bookmarks, go into File, choose Export and then you just give it a name, in which case, again, bookmarks.html is a default. Then, when you go to the next machine, what you do is you go into Organize Bookmarks again, you go to Import and Backup, and you choose Import HTML, and you choose the file that you've now got. You may have put that file onto a memory stick to transfer it from one computer to another. If you're on a Mac, again, you're in Organize Bookmarks, you choose File, and import. So that's how you do that for Firefox. If you're using Internet Explorer, you need to go into File, Import and Export, and there you'll see Import File and Export File. First thing you need to do is export it. You'll see you've got options to choose what you want to export. You choose Favorites, because they call them Favorites in Internet Explorer, and then you save the file again, move it to the machine you want, then you go back into File, you choose Import and Export, and this time you're importing a file, and again you just choose Favorites. So that's how you do it in Internet Explorer. If you're using Safari, again you just go into File, you choose Import and Export. So very simple to do, it's simply a case in all of these, exporting a file, saving that file, give it a name that you remember, putting it onto a network or a memory stick, putting it then into another computer that you want to transfer it to and then doing the opposite and actually just importing that file. So just remember to give it a good name and remember where to put it. That's the thing that normally lets people down. So if you are getting a new machine or you just want to transfer stuff onto another one, then that's how you do it. And on to this week's App of the Week. This week's App of the Week is more about a warning, and that is location services. You've probably seen it pop up when you've opened up an app and it says, do you want this app to use your location? You've got a choice of allow or don't allow. If you do allow, it does allow that app to tell people where you are. So if you're using things like Facebook, things like Foursquare, when you're out there and you then say, this is what I'm doing, it's actually telling people where you are. There are websites out there tracking this and alerting people to the fact that you're out. This is not good. So just bear in mind, using that is telling people that you're out, which means that nobody may be at home. I don't think this is a good idea, and I think there's a lot of other implications for this as well. Personally, for things like Facebook, Foursquare, and other social networking stuff, I always turn it off. I don't like it at all. And also, if it's an app I'm not familiar with, I turn it off as well. You'll see it pop up. There's certain apps out there that will help you find shops, restaurants, things like that. And that's not a good idea. If you're using maps and you need to be able to know exactly where you are, then you do need to switch it on. So that's a little word of warning about using apps and actually just telling people where you are. Remember, things like Facebook are not always that secure. Anyway, 
On to this week's new tutorials. This week, I just wanted to point out that I'm adding tutorials all the time. If you're using it for things like the ECDL, European Computer Driving Licence, then a lot of those are really good examples to follow and they're very good reminders as well. But if you're in your office and you're thinking, actually, I don't know how to do something, then this is one way that you can actually do it. Just go there, the tutorials are on the whole are very short, there's Excel, Access, Word, there's others there, iPhone, iPad as well, so just simply check them out. They're very useful. The reason I know that people want these is because they keep emailing, asking for more stuff. So if you want to know more, just go to my contact page and drop me a line and I'll do my best to do that tutorial as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.